so BPM somewhere between 125 and 140, just a bit higher than usual synthwave. And let's start with some chords. I chose D minor for a dark undertone of a track, just spacing triads out to have more air and width, and also D note will be our tonic note, repeating throughout a chord progression. It kinda helps with the subtle tension building in a track, also changing the last higher note in a later half of an 8-bar loop for more development in a progression. For this one I use a great free synth, which is incredible for all synthwave music in general, viral and sex. It has a ton of unique presets and this one in particular is from RW Collection. And then just adding some Talcor's LX for more synth brightness. Next up, a pad layer that will fill all the gaps in the mix and build an atmosphere of a track. Also using Tyrell preset for this one and adding some lovely Valhalla Supermassive reverb on top. Just reusing the same chords from original chord progression. And the last bass layer for the track will be the NST Choir, also free by the way, to add this angelic depth to the mix. You will hear choirs being used a lot in the Carpenter's Brute music, just adding more of a dramatic feel to your sound. Then adding some saturation and reverb on top, and we are good to go. In the second half of a track we will use another layer of choir, this one is made out of shorter heads, to add this side-chaining effect. Just adding more drama in the second half. As for a melody, if you want to get true Carpenter's Brute experience, you can do electric guitars or sharp and prominent synths, you can use bells like I did, also a Tyrell preset by the way, sitting pleasantly in the mix. And now to the juiciest part, bass. Obviously it's the biggest elephant in the room, and in order to get this thick Carpenter Brute type bass, we need layers. In the last video there were three layers, and this one there are five, so we are leveling up. The most important part about layering this type of bass, in my opinion, is understanding how to stay thick and wide. Basically these layers are split up into wide and crisp high end, wide and grainy high mid range, thick mids, deep low mid range, and the sub bass. Obviously the higher we go, the wider bass will be. The bass pattern is just copied lower notes from the main chord progression, just some dotted bass with some pattern variation in the later 8-bar midi clips. Usually Carpenter Brute has more movement in his bass lines, but this one can be a great starting point for you to copy. Sub is obviously in mono, just a sine wave one octave down, additional soft clip distortion and multiband compression, as well as EQing all the unnecessary mid frequencies. I added a decapitator on the sub for this grainy distortion, not too much, just adding some flavor. Low mid bass is a Tyrell preset, 1984 bass and lead, just some EQing to emphasize the mids more. This layer is a mid part of our bass course, serving purpose as the thickest one of the bunch. Thick mid-range is made with Faceplant. Faceplant is a great synth, especially for bass stuff. There are a lot of great presets here, and here specifically I chose Ballistic Bass. Just a bit of EQ and it works great. High mid is also made in Serum. The main principle for this one was mentioned in the comments to a previous video, so thank you, I gladly used your knowledge in this one. Props to you. First oscillator is a triangle wave from Basic Shapes with Sync turned on. Max unison levels, lowering detune and blending a little, also turning the random knob all the way down. Second oscillator is a standard waveform with a similar detune and blend options, but phase here is turned all the way down and the random knob is turned all the way up. Usually random knob is not ideal for this kind of basses, but it worked here better this way. Lucky envelope connected to the cutoff filter, triangle waves up one octave lower and directing out. This one is wide and vibrant, so we need some dimension for width, some multiband compression for the OTT action, a bit of chorus and an EQ boost right in the middle. A decapitator once again to add some distortion and grain, also adding Tel Chorus LX on the second option and utility for the width as well, also added some flavor here and just some final EQing. <laughs> 
The high-end layer is more of a preference choice, but this one is the widest and the noisiest one. Also in Serum, the previous preset just changed up a little bit. The same story with the unison levels, just changing this one one octave lower and this one one octave higher. Here, random knobs are turned all the way down, and play around with detune and blend options here. Using unique filters will be great here to create more movement for the sound, also connecting envelope to the filter cutoff. Effects with hyper dimension, tube distortion, OTT and some EQing and boosting high-end. Adding chorus once again, and a wider plugin here, and cutting all the lows and mids with EQ. The whole bass group has some extra processing, starting with a multiband compression, to kinda tweak highs, mids and lows, to your preference, then a great free multiband distortion plugin, which I just love. Fire doesn't have too much of a flexibility, but it's enough to thickify your sound and make your bass more present. I used cubic preset on lows, arc tone on mids, and this one on highs then compressing it all together with a glue compressor, using the clip just a bit to add more saturation and compress the bass just a bit more. Shaper box for side chaining the kick, and I also used auto filter here to cut all the super harsh frequencies on the high end just a little bit. So the whole group sounds like this. Talking drums, you can use a great library of DR84 or just use samples. In this case, I used more samples and just made a bunch of layers. Kicks are short and stumpy, adding Spiff Transient Shaper with this kick preset. The snare layer has a bunch of layered claps and different snares, with additional erosion on top for that extra high end, and Spiff with this preset to kinda round the whole group up. and then just some slamming hi-hats for the rhythm, separated on the left and right channel, speeding up in the end of each 4-bar loop. Then just add some transitioning effects and structure your track. More info about structuring you could find in my previous Synthwave video. And on the master channel I used some gold foss to kinda brighten everything up, a spiff once again to boost a mid-range a bit, and a master compressor with a bit of lower threshold, a bit of makeup gain, and finally a limiter with additional boost to your mix. And that's it, I hope you liked this video, thank you for watching, keep making your own sound, and bye!